Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, we are going to analyze again a very cool game. But before I get into who it is and what uh, was happening, I have to tell you that uh, I had a rather eventful weekend, uh, chess.com wise. Um, I did manage to bump into none other than the world famous uh, Nakamura Hikaru, who is uh, top 5 in the world and uh, probably the best Blitz player in the universe. Maybe uh, Carson would argue with that, but it's definitely one of the two. And um, yeah, we did play quite a few games and um, I would like to leave it in a bit of a mystery as to what happened, although you can very well guess what actually happened based on his strength and mine, but uh, there is a bit of a story there to be told. But before I get into that, uh, I would like to mention to you another story, which was that uh, I bumped into a dude called Talent Zeka um, on chess.com, who is a 24 plus a uh, really strong player and we had a couple of very good games against one another and um, I asked him to send me some of his best games and then he very vaguely mentioned that he beat Hikaru and I'm going like what the heck you got to send me that and uh, after quite a bit of convincing and begging I managed to get him to send me that game so today we are going to jump into Talent Zeka versus Nakamura Hikaru uh, Talent Zeka is white, 24.73 against Hikaru, uh, 55 million rating points there. So yeah, that's the game and I'm very excited about um, analyzing this game and uh, the reasons will be seen soon. So we are going to switch now into chess base mode as per normal and let's get into the thick of it. E4, G6, D4. Uh, should have been played, knight f3, bishop g7, knight c3, d6, d4, back into a normal perk, which by the way appears to be quite a frequent uh, opening in Nakamura's Blitz repertoire, he played it against me quite a bit too, um, a6, bishop d3, b5, and e5, very exciting move, see I messed it up with a couple of arrows, so let me explain the arrows, uh, after e5, um, Black often gets uh, a very good counter chance to play c5, bishop b7, knight d7, underlining, undermining these two central pawns. But on the other hand, white gets the e4 square, uh, which then uh, allows him to launch an attack on the king side in the center. Um, sorry, on the king side or in the center, depending on how black responds. Now, after bishop b7, there was another motif that uh, I should have mentioned here, and I'm surprised that Nakamura actually fell for it, which was e6. It is a very strong move, and black is already in a massive trouble here because he has to accept the sack. And after now g5, this is a standard motif that, uh, despite of being a pawn down white, is already a lot better because of the weakness, the chronic weakness of the e6 pawn is actually combined with the the chronic weakness of these two guys, apart from knight xe6, knight xh7 is threatened with bishop g6 and hitting everything on the diagonal, so Hikaru is already in trouble. He played queen d7, and after knight xh7 he's already a lot worse here because he simply can't recapture, and he still has two very weak pawns and the king stuck in the middle. Not a pretty sight at all. He played b4. Again, perhaps he should have tried to complete his development with knight c6 or something, um, ugly as it is, but b4 doesn't really address any of the issues that he currently has. And Talan Zaka here played a very good move that I really like. He played queen g4. Excellent stuff. The g6 pawn is not running away. You can take it any time. And in fact, after queen g4, you want to take it with the queen so that you can take the bishop so that you can take the rook. Wow. Very cool stuff. Nakamura had to run. And Talan Zaka had to chase. Very good stuff again. Uh, white is absolutely in the driving seat now. Pawn up. But that is actually perfectly relevant if you consider other important facts such as the king being in the middle and the very poorly developed black army. Bishop took on d4, now g5, renewing a lot of threats. Knight f7 check is on, knight x e6 is on, and um, yeah, white is just very wisely ignoring the fact that his knight is under attack on c3. Um, it's a perfectly relevant fact given that, uh, yeah this raging attack is going to <clears throat> swipe away the black army unless it's stopped but I don't think it's possible anymore. Um, he played king c8 trying to walk away from the threats knight takes e6 excellent move once again the c3 knight is uh, irrelevant and if the pawn takes after knight takes d4 white has got uh, bishop f5 as a main threat uh, which will expose all these pieces heavy pieces on this uh, diagonal very badly 
Nakamura played knight c6, bishop f5 came as per discussed, and now knight takes d4 is a deadly threat, so he had to take the knight with the bishop, so that he saved, so to speak, this bishop with a check, takes and king b8, and now we go back to the poorly developed bits of the black army, the queen went to g7, <laughs> and it's a funny picture, uh, something has to drop now and uh, essentially with this move the game is over uh, Nakamura could have resigned on move 16 not a bad uh, feat I have to say that uh, yeah you put Nakamura on the ropes in a blitz game in 16 moves uh, he played rook h5 but really the rest of the game is uh, doesn't really carry any value but a lot of fun for which reason I'm going to show you the whole lot obviously he took the knight and um, Bishop c8 would have been here, yeah. Nakamura's last hope to win on time or do some remarkably giant swindle. <laughs> but he actually played king a7 um, and got a little bit embarrassed after this check, which is nearly made. Knight d4 was forced. And after knight takes d4, knight should have been really time to put the arms down. Black is two pieces, uh, sorry, white is two pieces up and uh, it's going to simplify to a totally winning endgame after rook takes, bishop takes d7. <laughs> but then Nakamura uh, did uh, what I think most blitz, online blitz players hate the most. He had an epic mouse slip and played rook f8. Now what a cutie <laughs> is that. And um, quite understandably he didn't quite uh, wait for his opponent um, to take all the pieces that are under attack right now and uh, he resigned here and uh, therefore still making this game a miniature given that it didn't reach the 20 moves limit an excellent victory by Talon Zaka somewhat unexpected but hey uh, you only need to play one of these one or two of these kind of games and uh, you had your fair share of fun for a lifetime because hang on how many people can beat Hikaru like this so I'm very proud of Talon Zeka and very happy for him uh, good on him for his uh, for this lovely victory uh, and I hope that he carries on in this spirit and as I said uh, the Nakamura story is not quite over yet although I I have a lot of uh, games now piled up from uh, viewers of the channel so yeah things hopefully start to kick in now um, but yeah I will get back to you guys about the second chapter of the Nakamura story as well I hope you enjoyed the video and uh, I will be back with more soon thanks